You're the What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. Why do you have a camera? Because I wanted to get this on film. I'm not gonna talk to you if you have a camera. Look, it's cool, but are you sure? Oh, okay. Well, if it's not for me, then nobody can have it. How about that? This is a video I promised myself I would make 10 years ago when my mom died. It is needless to say that not all villains are born, but rather some are made, and the most tragic of them all are the fallen heroes, individuals whose work and ethics elevated them above the masses, making them a shining example of something greater. However, after a tragic event or prolonged period of degradation, they eventually become the thing they were fighting against, and now their very existence is a mockery to everything they stood for during their time of heroism. It is a tale as old as time, and while aspects of the story change from person to person, the vicious cycle of rise and eventual fall is still very much the same. These stories can be found in many real life examples, whether it be in people we know or in people we thought we knew. Although tragic, these stories at least now serve as a warning to anyone who is in the spotlight. It is completely subjective whether you think Boogie 2988 falls into this category or not, one of the older creators who had a significant impact on this platform. You might remember him as a kind gentleman who always wanted to do the right thing and give other people support, even when life didn't treat him all that well. However, no one can deny that the end of the road for this YouTuber is probably around the corner. Once regarded as the Mr. Rogers of YouTube, mentioning Boogie now in any serious debate feels like breathing in a lethal amount of poison. His reputation has deteriorated to a point where many say there isn't much he could do to sink even lower. The rock bottom is truly here and unfortunately it is here to stay. The story of Boogie 298 is the story of a man who couldn't escape the shadow of his past. It is a story of sorrow and inspiration, of gluttony and desire, and sadly, of his inevitable undoing. Turn back now or join me in this subjective look at one of the oldest creators on this platform. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? Um, as you can tell from the title of this video, this is not going to be a laugh fest. Boogie2988, or Boogie for short, is an internet nickname for a man called Stephen J. Williams. Stephen was born on July 24th, 1974 in a small Virginian town of St. Paul, and as we all know, his childhood wasn't something we would consider normal. His father was an alcoholic and his mother abused him and his two siblings, sometimes to very extreme degrees. I was abused... not once a month, not once a week, but physically, every day sometimes with a small gap in between of a day. I was cut. I was burnt with cigarettes. I was stabbed. I was thrown. I was picked up and thrown. Steven's sitting here thinking about that stuff. Uh, so many stories I want to tell, and it's, I'm, even now I'm ashamed to tell them. Born into such an abusive home, Steven suffered an absorbent amount of physical and mental torture. He always talked a lot about his mother in particular, with most of the tragic stories from his early childhood being perpetrated by her while his father, a coal miner, was always at work. Steven recalled one time when his mother broke his brother's nose because she caught him drinking. While his sister hated home so much, she tried many times to run away, to the point where their mother gave up on her and just handed her away to foster care. My sister continually ran away. She ran away at the age of 11, the age of 12. Um, she had a family member trying to adopt her. Eventually, mom just turned her over to foster care, to the child services, and just let her go. Um, and that left me alone in the home, and it just kind of went downhill from there. But it was also in that abusive environment that Steven found an attraction for video games, where he and his brother would attend local arcade to take their minds off the depressing reality they had to face at home. Pac-Man in particular stuck out to Steven, saying it was one of the biggest joys in his life during this period. After some time, his brother also left home because he enrolled in college, leaving Steven alone in a home that seemed to show no signs of stopping the mistreatment. Unfortunately, things only got worse from here. As if being subjugated to a psychological abuse wasn't enough, his mother also fed Stephen only junk food, which caused him to gain excessive amounts of weight. He was also never taught about the importance of dental hygiene, meaning he didn't brush his teeth that often, which eventually resulted in Boogie being in a lot of pain due to the rotting teeth he had in his mouth. Being morbidly obese at such a young age caused him to get bullied by his high school peers, adding to the strain on his mental state. But high school wasn't all bad. One teacher in particular that Stephen called as Miss Wall encouraged him to start reading, and here he found his appreciation for many writers like Stephen King and Douglas Adams. Eventually his father's alcoholism caught up with him, to a point in which he got a stroke that permanently damaged his brain, making him an invalid for the 
rest of his life. This event awoke something dark in Steven's mother, making her abuse more extensive. She once almost beat Steven to death, while on the other occasion where she scratched him while driving, Steven would, out of fear for his life, jump out of a running car onto the road. So whip the car around and start driving to a bank. She's like, now I'm going to be late for work. And she begins to, while driving her car, speeding down the road, clawing at my face. And I remember she caught my left eye just briefly, scratching the cornea a tiny little bit. Um, and I, my brain just took over. Uh, that PTSD, that fight or flight just took over. And we were doing 30 miles an hour, but I just opened the door to the car and I got out. This last situation was especially depressing when you consider that his teachers and fellow students all saw this take place and still did nothing after such a bizarre event to help Steven escape his toxic environment. The most insane thing in all of this must be the fact that his mother was a preschool teacher and by the stories she took good care of the kids under her supervision while being respectful toward their parents. You could say that life sometimes has a really sick sense of humor. Speaking of life, it would continue like this for a long time, leaving even more depressing stories in its wake, like the time Steven was trying to take care of a cat that his mom injured only to find it dead on the floor when he came back from school one day. Things would finally get better for Steven when he joined Upper Bound, an educational program where his life seemed to be getting the relief he desperately needed. Through this program, he would meet a lot of new people who were not inclined to mock Steven, but rather to get to know him. It seemed like Steven had found some genuine friends with whom he could play board and card games. It was also in that program that he would meet his first girlfriend. This new situation finally created a ray of light in Steven's dark world. It seemed like this period was probably one of the few good memories he had from his childhood, but eventually he finished high school and then went on to enroll in college. A few months before leaving home for the upcoming semester, his mother would hit him for the last time, where Steven would also stand up for himself after decades of abuse. And I realized that I had maybe 150 pounds on this already very large woman, and I stood a, almost a foot taller than her, and, and I grabbed her hands and I said, Mom, I think we're done with this. I don't think you get to hit me anymore. And she says, when you let go of my hands, I can't believe you're hurting me. I can't believe you're hurting me. I'm sorry, I'm hurting you, but we're just not going to do this anymore. You're not going to hurt me anymore. And she says, when you let go of my hands, I am going to kill you. And I'm like, and that very well, may very well be the case, but you're not going to hit me. In college, he would find new friends and his life seemed to be getting better. Unfortunately, you could remove Steven from an abusive home, but it seemed you couldn't remove an abusive home from Steven, as he was left with huge baggage from his past in the form of psychological problems as well as morbid obesity. Add to this a tragic breakup with his then girlfriend, the same one he met in high school upper bound program, and you can see how the problems were bound to arise. Steven would never finish college, but instead of returning home, he relocated to Fayetteville, Arkansas to live with his brother. However, his brother was married at the time and he didn't get quite along with his wife. Steven's presence definitely made the situation more awkward, so he decided to leave after only six months. But with nowhere else to go, he was, during this period, practically homeless, sleeping mostly on couches in university lounges or anywhere else that was comfortable enough for him to spend the night. So sometimes I would sleep in a TV lounge here at this dorm or a different dorm if I couldn't get into Chad's room. If I couldn't get into the dorm, I would sneak into a faculty building a computer lab. I'd stay on the computers all night and just not sleep that night. Sometimes I'd fall asleep on a couch or a chair in those computer labs. I just did whatever it took to stay warm, stay alive. He also had to forage for food from time to time while trying to keep with any other necessities to stay alive. His friend Chad, taking pity on his situation, gave him a place to stay in his dorm room where he had an extra bed for the semester. Steven attempted to earn some money by applying for various jobs, but there were only so many job opportunities for a man weighing around 200 kilograms at the time. This meant that the few jobs he managed to get paid only a minimum wage. Despite his terrible financial situation, Steven did start to save money as as well as sell some of his personal belongings. Thanks to this, he managed to pay for his own apartment, where he moved with his other friend Eric, whom he met while playing Magic the Gathering, which was his most favorite card game. The apartment at first had literally no furniture except the mattresses that the landlord left as a part of a deal, but with even more dedication, they managed to fill up the apartment with all the necessities. Being good with computers, Steven started to teach himself HTML at a local college so that he could design websites. This skill set ended up being a great asset because he eventually even managed to get some clients 
who paid very well for his services. Finally, the money started to come in, meaning Steven's financial situation improved remarkably, enough that he could indulge in his hobbies rather than just trying to stay alive. He gained even more friends, with all of whom he started to share his love of Magic the Gathering. As far as Steven was concerned, life was getting significantly better. Regrettably, as the time passed, designing websites became less and less profitable. This was primarily due to the fact that people outside of the US would also begin to design websites, but for much less money and time. Steven just couldn't keep up with this new trend, with him now working around 8 to 16 hours a day, with significantly less money coming in from his clients. Eventually, you know, the same website I would design over the course of a week, people outside of the country, once the rest of the world got on the internet, people outside of that country would design the exact same website using templates over the, in half the time I would, and they charge $25 for it. So that's what I started having to do. I started, went from making $500 a job to $200 a job to $100 a job to $50 a job. And I went from working four to eight hours a day to working eight to 16 hours a day. The situation has become so bad that he was once again approaching the poverty line where the income was barely enough for him to pay his bills and keep him afloat. We must also consider the fact that his eating habits were unfortunately still following him from St. Paul because he still consumed massive amounts of calories on a daily basis to a point where he reached a mind-boggling 250 kilograms, the largest he ever was. Add to this his new depression that was caused by overworking and it is easy to see that food was much more than just means to survive for Steven, food was a coping mechanism. Eventually even his web design business failed entirely, which led him to get a part time job at a local gaming store called the Gallery of Champions to try to fix his finances. Even the store would eventually fall on hard times, which meant that Steven couldn't be paid, but he absolutely loved working there, mostly because of the people he met and because of his love of card games, so he offered to work there on some occasions for absolutely free. Nevertheless this was still a horrible situation in which Steven had no way of sustaining himself. In what could be considered one of the worst parts of his life, Steven would borrow money any way he could, as well as apply for disability benefits. This was due to the fact that his weight has become such a problem for him that he was barely mobile. His mental state has become so bad that, in his own words, he was eating so much that he was hoping that food would put him in an early grave. Not to mention that his father also died of cancer around this time. All of this also had a terrible impact on his physical health, which was never good to begin with when you consider that Steven nearly died at the age of 25 because of lymphedemia infection in his leg. But what they didn't realize is that I had a condition called lymphedema, which is causing this porous material to appear in my legs, and that porous material was eventually getting infected, and it was almost impossible to fight the infection in it. So over the course of three or four months, I ended up getting this infection that rotted the flesh, actually necrotized the flesh. And they originally wanted to amputate the leg. There was that, the infection was so bad. But first they had to beat the infection that was in my heart. So they uh, ran a pick line directly to my heart and they pumped one of the strongest antibiotics known to man directly into my heart to try to keep me alive. And they succeeded. And then slowly and surely over the next six and a half months, they managed to heal that leg. As you might expect, binge eating and playing World of Warcraft non-stop did not help this situation. This is the time when Steven would spend his life as a shut-in for almost 7 years. But no matter how bad things were, this was also the beginning of something great, because on April 6, 2006, Steven launched his YouTube channel under the name Boogie2988. <laughs> Boogie would start to post videos on this newly created platform so that he could give himself something to kill the time. The first of his videos mostly consisted of him acting foolish in front of a camera while at the same time using his weight as a central theme. Early YouTube, being what it was, seemed to like this type of behavior, which gave him some attention as he slowly started to gain views and subscribers. YouTube gave Boogie a new meaning in life, but there seemed to be a trend in Steven's life at that point which is that a good thing must always be followed by a very bad one. In October of 2009, Boogie's mother got really sick and would eventually pass away. The impact was devastating for him, something he showed a lot in his videos, where he would recall his mother on a few occasions. I haven't talked a lot about my mom. There's video footage of her up here on this channel. Some people have made fun of her. Some people have said she seems really sweet. Um, some people know some of the backstory about her. And I'd like to share some of that with you now. One of the notable moments was when he was near her deathbed, where she apologized to Steven for ruining his life. Uh, and then she looked up at me with this look in her eyes that I'll never forget, and she says, I'm sorry. And I said, for what? 
And she said, I ruined your life. And I said, no, Mom. No, I, I like who I am. Don't you like who I am? It is clear that he wanted to remember his mother for all the good things she has done while attempting to forget all the bad. This loss was so great for Boogie that he even contemplated suicide but in the end he decided to stay and fight because of his friends. And while this was a tragic period in his life, it didn't stop him from posting videos, making even more personal vlogs that attracted even more people and he would eventually hit the jackpot with his made up character which he named Francis. It's me Francis again and I am really pissed off. It, it, 2009, if you weren't aware, was a shitty year for gaming. Pretty much up until last month, okay? I was stuck playing World of fucking Warcraft every fucking day. Because there were no other games to play. Francis was a big part of his YouTube channel in the early days. In these videos, Boogie was acting as a stereotypical gamer who overreacted to every inconvenience thrown his way. On some occasions, he would also break stuff around him in a hilarious fit of rage. An overweight man acting idiotic in a video skit seemed to draw a lot of people, to the point where one particular video in this format called Francis Gets His Warcraft Account Hacked would be an absolute banger and would catapult Boogie's status on YouTube to new heights. So the reason why is because in 2010 an extremely popular YouTuber at the time called Ray William Johnson featured that video on his show Equals 3, directing tens of thousands of people to Boogie's channel. When I first found this last video, I thought I had struck gold. Now the video itself is about this guy, Francis, and Francis loves playing World of Warcraft, but unfortunately for him his account was hacked and he's a tad bit upset about it. Sorry, but I've been crying a little bit tonight, I'm just really upset, I don't... All right, Francis, calm down. I'm sure your World of Warcraft account was getting you laid left and right. But even though people came to his channel for his silly skits and Francis acts, they stayed for more personal vlog videos where Boogie just talked about himself or life in general. From the very beginning, he was always open about his upbringing sharing his experiences of what it is to grow up in an abusive home. It is here that he also shared advice and support with his many viewers. Many people believe that the image of who Boogie was is the main reason he rose to fame in such a short period of time. At the core of his persona is a damaged man who is trying to be the best person he can be despite the trauma from the past that is still haunting him. So naturally, people flock to his side in massive numbers to offer their support. And how could they not? With such a tragic backstory, you couldn't help but feel pity for the man. But, as it is always the case, fame bought with it a slew of trolls who were primarily interested in mocking Boogie's appearance, a common practice that, sadly, always comes with popularity. The main problem here is that Boogie gave those people much more attention than he should have, because he made multiple videos on the subject which showed a certain amount of insecurity when faced with mockery or criticism. I just want to start off by saying, you don't know me, and the 30 seconds of video that you think you saw, uh, it doesn't give you the chance or the opportunity to get to know me. And so when you see me, what do you see? You see a big guy? You see someone four times as large as you'll ever be in your life? And you think how stupid he must be, how worthless, how ignorant, how sad. Well, you don't know me. You're never going to know me. You're only going to know what I put inside these little boxes, inside these little videos, and make you think, and make you wonder, and make you question uh, what, what you're viewing. His unhealthy obsession with his detractors would follow him to the present day and it is possible that that was the catalyst that would eventually lead him to his current situation. But as the time would go by, Boogie would start to make money through AdSense, something that came as a godsend for someone in his situation. Because the opportunity to make money doing what you love is not something that everyone just gets to do. The years would go by like this for a while with Boogie still making videos about games and of course Magic the Gathering. But 
It was his personal vlogs that attracted the attention of a particular fan who saw Boogie as an inspiration because of her own tragic life situation. When they began talking, it was soon discovered that they had a lot of things in common and because of that they took a great liking to each other. But the physical distance between them was just too great, so they started an online relationship at first. Eventually, she did move out to Arkansas so they could live together. Her name was Desiree, known to us as Des, and Boogie immediately knew that she was the one. Des would encourage him to get better at life as as well as YouTube, pushing him to do more physical activities to help with his weight and also taking on the role of Francis' sister in Boogie's famous skits. Here, I'm sorry, okay? Francis, that's like a dollar and 80 cents. I don't know, it's like a fucking down payment, okay? I don't know, I don't know what you expect from me. I don't have a fucking job, okay? I'm a YouTube check you can hear you, I don't have any money. Okay, well then I'm taking your iPad. No, don't take my fucking no, I'm iPad. No, iPad god then. damn it. Obviously you can't be trusted with it. I will, I'll give you the money, just give me back my fucking iPad. I want a piece of, give it, take your fucking money. I want a piece of level, let me peek a level. Because of Boogie's size, she didn't work at first, but would look after him for the time being, meaning that Boogie was the main income provider for the household. Nevertheless, she seemed to have a very positive influence on him, something Boogie realized himself. So after less than two years since the start of the relationship, he would pop the question. And not only have I become happier, I've actually become happy. The kind of happy that when I wake up in the morning, I'm glad to face the day. And when I go to bed at night, I'm kind of sad because the day is over. But not only that, you've given me the possibility, the future of creating a family of my own. Something we've been working on together for the past two years. Something I dreamt about as a child. Something that not only did I need, but something that I wanted. Someone to be with, to love, to cherish, to have, and to hold, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I, I wanted to, uh, that's why I wanted to make it official. So I got you this. And, um, Des, I'm asking you to, uh, to marry me. Will you marry me? In 2013, the wedding would take place and I still remember this montage as if it were yesterday. To be honest, when Boogie was getting married, I felt like I was getting married, which makes this video even harder to make. It is somehow uplifting to watch these older clips of Boogie being the best version of himself. For a time, it seemed that with all the hardships thrown his way, as well as his horrible upbringing, Boogie somehow made it to the top by not only having a loving wife, but also having a job many people could only dream of. Whenever there was a need for a large amount of funds, Francis' video would do the job, with skits like Where's My Goddamn Mountain Dew currently sitting at 24 million views. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find my goddamn Mountain Dew. Yeah, did you drink my Mountain Dew? Did you drink my Mountain Dew? Let me smell your breath. Let me smell your breath! Fat guy destroys Xbox, has 12 million views. and even less known Francis skits that Boogie recorded in his own room, like this one called Francis Hates Google Plus, which currently sits at 1.4 million views. And you added ASCII art? People are drawing pictures of dicks! People are putting up pictures of dicks! Jesus Christ, lol, big fat dick! Are you kidding me? Oh, all my comment section is dick, 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 cock, dick, 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 cock, dick, dick! What the fuck, YouTube? On the other hand, if he wanted to make a serious video, he could make one in the form of a vlog, where he discussed various subjects, even including topics like depression, loneliness, and even suicide. Viewers always appreciated Boogie for his mature approach to the subject and for being a support pillar for many people. To a video created by a fellow YouTuber by the name of Matthew Santoro. And Matthew put up a video last week, then immediately took it down, called My Abuse Story. 
I watched a re-upload of the video and then I reached out to Matt and said that that video made me feel a lot better about some of the things that happened to me and because I had done that and many other people had done that Matthew decided to, to put that video up again. It is also here that he gained his level-headed reputation because he would never take sides in any debate but would always approach it from a centrist viewpoint. With all of this attention it seemed reasonable that Boogie would eventually hit 1 million subscribers and in 2013 he did just that, setting him to new heights of popularity. Ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet making a video I never thought I would make. And that's a video celebrating my million uh, subscriber landmark. His status would extend outside of YouTube since he also showed up in commercials and, most importantly, in a documentary series called Super Size vs Super Skinny, where Dr. Christian is trying to help people with weight problems by fixing their eating habits. This is especially significant because Boogie has been struggling with his own weight for quite some time now. As you might expect, weighing around 230 kilograms would result in a lot of discomfort for pretty much anyone. Many people at the time actually believed that Boogie promoted obesity, owing to his most popular videos in which he expressed his weight in a comedic manner. However, if they saw any of his personal videos, they would see that anything but was the case. From the beginning, Boogie would encourage people to not let their eating habits ruin their lives like he did his. He said many times that he is very worried about his weight and what side effects it might bring. For quite some time now, he was also trying to lose it in any way he could. With a size like his, any real exercise was out of the question and dieting seemed to be the only option. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, with food being such a big part of Boogie's life, he would always make no progress or when he did make progress he would always gain back any weight he managed to lose. All of this just showed how much he was still struggling with his demons from the past. Being left with what seemed to be like no options, he eventually decided to go for a gastric bypass surgery which would drastically shrink his stomach so he would not be physically able to eat. However, the surgery was still in planning at this point and it is not something one can do on a whim and Boogie's thoughts were probably redirected at the first larger controversy he was involved in during his time on YouTube. What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again through the power of the internet. Uh, I haven't done one of these vlogging, rambling series videos in a while, so my vlogging series, I, I like to call it my rambling series. 2014 would see Boogie reach 2 million subscribers, adding to his incredible rise, but because of his high status, he was dragged into the internet drama whether he wanted to or not, as this was also the year Gamergate first appeared. In case you don't know, Gamergate was an online movement dedicated to preserving ethics in video game journalism. Due to the actions of some members of the movement, it's often linked to misogyny with Within the gaming community. Gamergate itself was created after a scandal involving a certain game developer called Zoe Quinn. Supposedly she had a relationship with multiple gaming journalists where the said journalists gave positive views of her game. The movement was also targeting media critic and feminist Anita Sarkeesian, a very controversial figure who gained fame for her video series Damsels in Distress, in which she tried to expose sexism and misogyny in video games by pointing out their design choices, gameplay features and story elements. To many, this series was extremely misleading citing the deceptive use of clips and sometimes fabricated gaming elements to push some kind of agenda. This led to many gamers starting a harass campaign against her and some even sent death threats, which created yet another group of people defending Anita and by this point everything had devolved into an absolute shit show. With everyone blaming and insulting each other, any real or genuine discussion on the topic was drowned out by all the noise. Gamergate is too large to cover in a few minutes, but you get the idea. With such a huge storm on the sea, Boogie had to, at some point, share his opinion on the subject. In his video about the topic, he sided with neither group, trying to keep his position as a moderator. You would think that choosing neither side would save him from any backlash, but a short time after the said video, Boogie's personal information got leaked online by one of Anita's supporters for supposedly helping encourage idiots to harass women. But that wasn't the only thing, as all kinds of criticisms were being hurled at Boogie for his indifference on the subject. He did try to mend the flames with a few more videos, but it didn't seem to work. The gaming game drama created a horrible situation for Boogie, but due to how controversial the topic is, he would have gotten hate no matter what he did. So there isn't much he could do to escape some kind of backlash. But not even this controversy was enough to grace his new empire, something that is apparent when you consider that in 2015 Boogie bought a house for him and his wife to live in. When you remember that Boogie was homeless 10 years ago in the same city where he just bought a house, we can say that this is an incredible example of financial turnaround. Everything one could hope for was within his grasp. A loving wife, 
a house and an amazing support structure from his YouTube audience. The only thing that seemed to still be a constant problem was his weight, something he still couldn't fix, despite numerous videos in which he explained how he was attempting to lose it. The main issue was still that the diet did eventually work, but Boogie's eating habits would soon catch up with him and he would regain all the weight he had lost or even go above it in some cases. Since determination alone was not enough after all these years, gastric bypass surgery was now a real option since he saw it as the only chance to lose weight once and for all. But to undergo this kind of medical procedure, the patient must undergo a strict diet to lose a specific amount of body mass before the surgery. The main purpose of this is to reduce body fat in the abdominal region, especially in and around the liver. And this is what Boogie committed to doing to finally defeat his demon. Until then, Boogie was still growing his business, gaining even more connections with other members of the community and even winning the Trending Gamer Award at the 2016's VGAs. Although I'm not sure how you would see this as a success, since VGA is pretty much just a collection of horrible jokes, the biggest joke of them all being the show itself. Hydrobot at it again! Enjoy the rest of the Game Awards, everyone! We gotta go! Hydrobot is gonna school me on how to protect my skin from irritation. Well, that right there is why we do the show, folks. Picture this, I'm a bag of dicks, put me to your lips. I am sick, I will punch a baby bear. Take a shit, little. Nevertheless, any positive feedback is always greatly appreciated, if you ask me. On top of that, as we reach 2017, Boogie's channel has reached a mind-boggling 4 million subscribers. Unfortunately, the streak of good fortune would not last long, because another controversy would soon rear its head. Boogie would be on an anti-bullying panel with our old friend Anita Sarkeesian at VidCon that same year. After a long session, Boogie would end the panel with his closing speech. I practiced this one for weeks, okay. Um, I think sometimes because we do talk about um, certain subsets uh, of people, specifically people without privilege, uh, some people can get the misconception that only those groups are targeted. And I say this as the only male on this panel, and I say this as a, a white cis male, a person who's in a place of privilege, that I understand that some communities have it worse. And I, and I don't say this to dismiss anyone else's pain or to say that I have it worse because I genuinely don't believe that I do. I just want to say that if it can happen to me and I'm coming from a place of privilege, I think this can happen to anybody. It can happen to any of you who choose to create tomorrow. And I think when we, we, when we get that misconception, I think that we, we have naysayers. Well, it, it's not worse for women. It's not worse for people of color. I, I think when we focus it on a human rights issue, not a woman's issue, not a man's issue, not a, 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 a gay or straight issue, or a fat person or skinny person's issue, but it's a human rights issue that affects us all, at least in some way, I feel we can unite these subsets and these groups and these, and these different people, and I think we can fight it together. And when we do that, I, I, I think that's how we actually could potentially end cyberbullying. But we have to end, I think, this the squabble between each group before we can do that, and that's For some reason, this speech agitated Anita to the point where she confronted Boogie right after the event to throw a finger in his face and give him a piece of her mind. His reaction to this situation and the video he made garnered a lot more hatred than you would think. Boogie's audience lost respect for him as a result for his indifference to Anita, who attacked him first, and his failure to defend himself in any real manner. A couple more panelists had their closing arguments and then we left the stage and... Uh, I'm I'm shaking, very, very nervous, but I felt like it went well. And when I get off of the stage at the bottom of the panels, there's Anita, and she seemed to be very, very upset. And I don't remember exactly what she said. Uh, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, but she said in a very upset that I think it was very fucking uncool that you said what you said there at the end, knowing that no one else would have enough time to respond. And I, I bet you can imagine how that affected my anxiety because the exact focal point of my anxiety for the entire weekend, in fact, for the last six weeks, 
the nightmare scenario that I was terrified of actually had come true. I'd upset somebody who I very, very much had tried to not upset and did not want to upset. This backlash did shake him up a bit, but he had other worries to think about, primarily his gastric bypass surgery, which was quickly approaching. Not to mention that a procedure like this should be taken very seriously, since it could go wrong in many ways, and in some cases it can even lead to death. However, the surgery was a success, and Boogie's stomach was reduced to the size of an egg. The topic around gastric bypass would be the main theme of his videos at the time, because this was a very interesting subject that many people were unaware of while Boogie was able to tell his story on the matter from his first-hand experience. However, his YouTube channel would show the first real signs of a serious problem that was about to arise. Adpocalypse was in full swing in 2017, which meant that YouTube was demonetizing many videos that they deemed inappropriate at the time. Unfortunately for Boogie, all of his content involving Francis would be demonetized and the same would apply for all the future videos in this format. The main reason why was because of the extensive swearing and violence displayed in these videos, something that was no longer welcome on the new YouTube. As you might guess, the Francis skits primarily revolved around him being loud and destructive for audience's amusement, so if you take that away, there is nothing left. Left. Essentially, Boogie's most profitable content was no longer profitable, which would have a significant impact on his financial situation in the future. All of this happened while he was still recovering from the surgery, however, it still wasn't the worst thing to occur. In the beginning of 2017, some time before the surgery happened, Boogie would turn up a stream for his audience, a stream that is considered by many to be the beginning of the real downfall for Boogie 2988 and his career, because things are only going to get worse from here. At first, everything seemed quite normal. Boogie was chatting with his audience and occasionally inserting a karaoke session. That is, until the 30 minute mark, when Boogie started to open up about things that absolutely absolutely should have stayed behind closed doors at the time, meaning he opened the floodgates way too early, exposing some very private information about him and his wife without thinking about the repercussions. I'm gonna try to put it in the nicest way I can too, okay? Because it's very important that I do. But I want you guys to know the truth, so I'm not gonna sugarcoat it too much, okay? You guys remember about five months back, I made a stream, I was doing a stream, and I got a phone call in the middle of the stream, and it was my wife calling, and she wanted to talk to me, so we talked. And she said that she was really frustrated with uh, the process of the surgery and frustrated with all the other things that she was ha having trouble, trouble with. And uh, we were going to take a break after we were going to take a break after the uh, the surgery. Uh, but we hit the four month mark and, uh, when we hit the four month mark, my wife, uh, well, at the three month mark, my wife went out of town for a week to go spend a little time with family and she enjoyed her time there, but it was hard for us because I wasn't really ready to take care of myself. My doctor even advised against me being left alone, but my roommate took the week off to help me out and she spent five days up with her mom and her cousin. And then she came home and she said, Steve, I, I want to go back home for a while. And I said, okay. And she goes, I really feel like I need to, to, um, to find myself. I really feel like I need a few weeks away from the marriage to find myself and figure out who I am and what I want to do. So are you still coming home? And she says, yes, Welcome I'll be home. Sub, and it may not be on the second, but it'll be real close to then. Um, and I'll be there for the, the Christmas party on the 18th. And we'll do Christmas together. But then I'm going to want to uh, to go home for some more. And I'm like, okay, I understand that. You know? And I personally think, based on what she's saying and how she's saying it, that there's no end to the amount of time she's wanting to spend up there. If you are not sure what is going on, here is a summary. His wife, 
Des went to her hometown for a week to spend some time with the family. After that week had passed, she told Boogie that she wanted to stay even longer because, in her own words, she needed some time away from the marriage. Basically, she was admitting to some marital problems that the audience wasn't aware of until that point in time. Naturally, the first thing that comes to mind is the possible end of the marriage, since wanting to spend the time separated is usually the first sign of that exact same thing. Wanting to end such rumors, Boogie, in his infinite wisdom, decided to reveal even more personal stuff about him and his wife on that exact same stream, which wasn't met with the enthusiasm he probably expected. I'm one of the only men that she has, has ever really been attracted to. Because my wife has never been comfortable around other men. And she's not always comfortable around me. My wife tells me she loves me today as much as she's ever loved me, and I believe her. Um, we're great together, but sometimes we're not. And right now, she needs to do other shit, and that's okay. And if she decides a month from now she wants to come back, or six months from now she wants to come back, I'll make it work, you know? I'll do whatever needs doing, because I love her in a way that I put her in front of me. Because it's the right thing to do, and I'm always going to do the right thing. But the reason it's the right thing to do is that woman saved my life. If you have decided to read the comments on that video, you can get a good idea of how angry people were with Boogie. This disaster was met by yet another stream in which Boogie revealed that his wife wanted to stay separate for even more time. And again, instead of letting the dust to settle and talking things out, he thought it would be better to have an emotional episode in front of the camera. What I mean by this is that Boogie had another stream, this one dedicated to the looming divorce. May and my wife have talked about it, and we have decided that we will, um, I think we're looking into separating after the surgery. Now, I don't think, I don't think divorce is what's going to happen. And I don't think we're going to get divorced. I think we're going to separate for a little while to get a little bit of space. Boogie listened to sad music, cried on camera, and even watched his proposal video. You need a support system, though, after surgery? Well, that's gonna be you. That's gonna have to be you. Open my eyes, I try to see, but I'm blinded by the white lines. I can't remember how, I can't remember why I'm lying here tonight, and I can't stand the pain. When your soul embarks, then I'll follow you. To the dark. You and me have seen everything to see from Bangkok to Calgary and the soles of your shoes. Depressing is the only word that comes to mind while watching this downward spiral. Boogie was hoping that this would eventually come back and that this was just a temporary solution for the marriage problems that they were facing. However, soon after, he would announce that the divorce would indeed be happening. But Des offered to stay with Boogie until the surgery and some time after that to help with the recovery to a point where he would be able to take care of himself. Amazingly enough, they did stay in touch after the divorce, with Boogie even citing that they were still friends. He even called her live on stream sometime later on his birthday, and his viewers were treated to what I can only describe as the strangest five minutes I have ever experienced. What do you want? Hey, it's good to hear your voice. It's been a couple days. How, have you, how are you doing? I'm alright. Can't complain too much. I made it to 45. What do you think about that? It's impressive. Yeah, I didn't think I would. It's VidCon is weird without you. It really is because, like, we're at all these very familiar places, right? And like going to Disney without you, I've been like five times now. It's just so weird. It's just it's your ghost haunts me there. It's kind of it's kind of nice though. I haven't been to Eureka Springs in forever because people don't know this, but that's where we got engaged. Yeah, it is. All of the YouTube videos are still up. You know, our wedding YouTube video is still up and everything. 
Because I don't see a point in deleting it. People have asked me, like, why I don't delete it. But I'm like, that's a be- what's the best day of my life. I love that day. Why would I delete that? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, jeez, what a day. Somebody says this woman is hilarious. Music is more than... Yeah, why do you think I married this woman? Of course, she's, she's hysterical. She's far funnier than I ever was. Why do you think the phrases videos haven't been good since we separated? <laughs> what her head would look like on a stick. Boogie would unfortunately leave 2017 as a divorced man and, as I said earlier, things only got worse from here, as the problems with YouTube and his degrading mental state would soon take their toll. Boogie's behavior became stranger by the day from then on. What I mean by that is that the kind and gentle person we saw in videos started to feel like an act. Boogie even admitted that he does play a character for the camera and that it might not represent who he actually is. It was extremely strange to hear something like this come from Boogie since his personality is the main reason why people stick around his channel. The true difference between YouTube Boogie and the real Boogie would be revealed during his live streams where his persona began to crack, exposing someone buried deep inside. Someone who was, perhaps, always there, but was good at keeping it hidden. Do you guys want to see what I can do? Why do I have two beds? One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for my hooker. One for me and one for the hooker. Is there people out there, little assholes, little douchebags, little dickheads, little cunts, little shit faces, little fucking whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, and, and they fucking, little pricks, little fucking ball sacks, little scrotal faced pieces of shit. It wasn't just the indecent comments or the attitude that was jaw dropping to anyone who watched Boogie on YouTube. It was also his interactions with other people, like the time he tried to crack a joke at the guy whose parents got divorced. Right, are your parents still, are your parents still alive? By chance? Uh... Here we go, ready? Yeah, they are. And are your parents still together? No. Okay, alright, so I, maybe I should take point then. What? Uh, well, if your parents aren't together, then you probably come from a broken home. You're probably going to get real angry when you start losing, so... You know. I won last game, but... Or his response to Ellen from Everyday Damn Fitness, a fellow YouTuber who made a video about Boogie's state, mostly addressing his weight, where he pointed out that he was not putting in the necessary effort to lose it. This made Ellen believe that Boogie did a gastric bypass surgery simply as a shortcut. Um, I pretty much said that he was getting gastric bypass surgery as a quick fix, that it was like, uh, it was basically the equivalent to a addict cutting their thumbs off so they couldn't push a plunger in, you know. Uh, that he, he is a serious food addict, serious food addict. At one point in time, he weighed close to, I think, 600 pounds. Um, he was a very big man. Uh, he addicted to food. Many videos of him just guzzling, you know, sodas and eating huge pizzas. Addicted to food, like truly, truly addicted to bad food. He also commented on Boogie's mental state, exposing some of the disturbing things he said on his live streams. Boogie's initial response was atrocious to say the least. He essentially attacked the guy who genuinely wanted to help him and accused him of using his name for clicks. He also mentioned this on H3H3 podcast where he opened the floodgates for his large fan base to attack everyday damn fitness by lying. But they turned it into, oh, he's encouraging people to stay fat and he's gonna die in the next year and all the stuff, right? I challenge each and every one of you to look above, below, and at the end at the video that I made about Boogie 298. I challenge each and every one of you, I really do, I challenge each and every one of you to find where I said anything like that. And while they did make amends later, it just showed that Boogie was losing his grip on social aspects, which was evident in his interactions with others. Another way he demonstrated his mental instability was through a series of extremely strange videos at the time, the most disturbing of which was Boogie slash Francis losing his mind. In the said video, Boogie was filmed in a room that has the words I am a psychopath written all over the walls, while in the meantime talking to himself and pretending that he is addressing his made-up character Francis as if he were a real person. Later on, he brings in the effigy of his ex-wife to deliver a monologue that I can only describe as a cry for help. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Francis. And I want to be honest with you, I don't think Boogie's doing so good. <laughs> Shut up! I don't need you here. No, I, I, I disagree! I disagree. I think you assaulted his mother about 10 minutes ago. I, I you know, it, it, things are getting a little out of hand. It, it, it's just a prank. It's just a prank. What kind of prank is this? What kind of prank is this, okay? Read the writing on the wall. 
All right, but for now, you're gonna have to trust me. I don't, I don't trust you, dude. I have never trusted you. You are the most untrustworthy person on the planet. Do you understand that? You're an actual sociopath. You're an actual psychopath. You are the reason she left, okay? And you know that. Yeah, Boogie, I'm why she left. I'm all killed by the only reason you found her to begin with, okay? Okay, you win. You win. You're in charge. You're not supposed to eat it, idiot. That's for later. Okay, okay, all right. How do I know I can trust you? You don't have to trust me, buddy, okay? I got a friend you can talk to. Well, look right there. She's here. I'm sorry, I know you don't like being on camera. How have you been? Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to know you're happy. I miss her too. I know you're tired of hearing it, but uh... I'm really sorry. Maybe these were the real signs of a broken mind that Boogie was forced to live with. His mental instability wasn't the only thing on display, as his professional interests were also questioned while he was interviewing his friend Kid behind the camera. This video was despised by basically everyone on the sole basis of how manipulative it is. If you are unfamiliar with the situation, here is a quick recap. Kid behind the camera used to be a popular YouTuber known for his angry grandpa show. His real name is Michael and he had some real accusations rolling in on him when the clear signs of physical abuse towards his children were shown on camera for YouTube views. In this interview, Boogie asked a laughably easy questions without really getting into the meat of the problem, which was the serious concern of child abuse. Rather, he almost always agreed with Michael and sometimes even answered the questions for him, all while ignoring the real issue and giving Michael all the praise he needed. Michael, are you abusive, man? Are you abusive to these kids? Well, first, I wasn't abused as a kid. Oh, that's right. I was, yeah, you're saying. You I was the abused. golden child. And you said you had hardly anything saved. I still have hardly anything Because we were talking, you had a video saying you were like going broke. Yeah. And I called you up and I'm like, Michael, is this real? And you're like, yeah, dude, I, I have barely anything saved. Tell them why that is. Tell them why. I mean, I take care of everybody in my family. When dad was alive, I was paying all of his bills. Not to mention he gets half of the YouTube money. And a lot of people will say, if that's what he thinks is appropriate to show for the video, what is he not showing? I mean, do you guys fight off camera? Is it worse when you, have you ever hit Bridget? Never. I would, Dad raised me that a man who puts his hands on a woman isn't a man at all. Amen. Many people thought that the main reason why Boogie acted like this was because Michael and him have been friends for a long time and YouTube connections are a valuable asset in this business. So when another YouTuber called Deadio5 was accused of practically the same thing, which is abusing his children, Boogie was much more vocal in condemning their actions both on Twitter and YouTube. So it is easy to notice the hypocrisy when he didn't give the same amount of criticism to his friend who was in a similar position. While the video at first was monstrously criticized, viewers also pointed out a real issue in the YouTube community, that is how fellow YouTubers are willing to cover for each other even in the face of the most heinous accusations in order to keep the support structure intact. It seemed that no one was safe from this conduct, not even Boogie2988. It is entirely subjective to believe that this was the reason for Boogie's behavior or if it was simply his inability to get confrontational. Nevertheless, it was still one of the factors which caused him to get a significant amount of hate. He also started to get extremely defensive about his weight. I wasn't able to continue my clean eating, man. I'm really sorry about that. I guess it was very important to you and I'm sorry that it was, but yeah, since I was traveling, I uh, wasn't able to keep it up, man. I got back home and I've been doing it ever since I got back home, but you're right, I, was, I didn't do it while I was traveling, that's a real shame, man. And I'm really sorry I wasn't able to. Six months after his surgery, he had lost approximately 50 kilograms. However, that was the usual weight loss for people who had undergone this kind of surgery, primarily because it stopped them from eating more, and after that point, Boogie needed to put in actual effort if he wanted to lose even more. Even though he stated otherwise, he did not put forth the necessary effort. He constantly assured his audience that he was doing the proper diet without cheating, but that was soon proven to be a lie. Mostly because, at his size, he should have been losing weight at a massive rate, but he didn't. Since surgery, 540 pounds to 360. 
I've still got a lot of weight to go though. I to reach my target weight from the surgery in that first year and a half, in that first 18 months, I need to lose an additional hundred pounds. So I'm pretty far off target so far. Also, some pictures surfaced of Boogie from events showing him lying about his eating habits. He made his weight loss journey public, but got mad when people publicly criticized him for not committing to the task. Even more negative publicity followed with the controversy involving better help, an online platform that turned out to be a complete scam made to swindle people with mental problems out of their money that Boogie and a lot of other YouTubers advertised and supported on their channels. The newfound criticism started to convert a large number of of his fans into haters, something that Boogie had a real problem with. Bad opinions had a negative effect on him for a long time, and now these opinions grew more each day, to the point where a weird and disturbing pattern started to emerge in his videos. Boogie began to mention, both jokingly and seriously, the possibility of him killing himself. I think, I think, and this is my opinion, I think when the time comes, I'm gonna have no problem pulling the trigger or like one, one, once, once I fully given up hope, you know, once I fully given up hope, was I fully ready to go? Once I'm, once the internet has forgotten about me and you guys don't, aren't, you don't need me anymore and I'm not needed around anymore. And if I haven't found a wife and I haven't had kids or something like that, and I haven't had the life that I, uh, uh, you know, wanted for myself and I'm, I'm just miserable and alone. I don't think, I don't think I'll have any problem pulling the trigger. Are you and Robin Wayne's related? No. Both of you shared the last name? No. That was, I, I have nothing in common with Robin Wayne's at all whatsoever. He's hilarious. I'm a piece of human garbage. So pretty much, pretty much pretty different. I think the only thing we have in trouble, the only thing we have in common is that eventually I'll probably kill myself and also mental illness. At the start, this type of behavior horrified his audience, which had no idea that Boogie was in a mental state where he could be capable of doing something like that. The possible result could have been due to the combination of divorce and the new infamy. One stream was so bad that someone even called a welfare check for Boogie, something that agitated him very much. Um, but anyway, I talked to I talked to them in, in DMs, and I told them what my plan is. My plan is as it is right now, and I'm, this is my first time talking about it publicly, but because I don't trust this person, because I've told them everything in, in DMs, and, and they decided to call in a welfare check on me that involved the cops showing up at my house, paramedics showing up at my house, the fire department coming into the house, in the middle of a date, by the way. Here's what I told him. I told him that all of this shit is making me suicidal, and I didn't want to fucking kill myself. That I might kill myself in a month, I might kill myself when I take care of my other shit, but I don't want to fucking kill myself tonight. I want to do it on my terms. I want to do it on my time. But the shit that I'm dealing with is making me fucking suicidal. And I told my friend, I'm like, look, I'm alone right now. I can't be attacked right now. I can't, I can't do this shit right now. Please, I'm going to block you. I'm just, I'm just, I don't want to talk to you about it anymore. Just leave me alone. I, I'm, I, don't, I don't want to fucking blow my brains out tonight. I just want to be left alone, man. This stream generated a lot of hate because Boogie got mad at people for trying to take care of him and to most of them, it started to appear that Boogie was emotionally manipulating his audience so that they wouldn't abandon him. Other of his videos showed a similar pattern of insincere behavior, as if all of that wasn't enough. Another huge scandal was soon to arrive when on the H3H3 H3 podcast, Boogie would reveal that he is dating a new, much younger girlfriend, a fact that piqued the interest of many people watching. No, she was, I think she was fine. She she's, got it. Yeah, she's a smart girl. She is strong, powerful, smart girl for her age. Strong, I just independent. Was just shocked. I just how old is she? <laughs> how old is she? <laughs> What's the age? <laughs> she will be able to legally drink soon. Uh, Damn you, dog, dude. Unfortunately for Boogie, he wouldn't be laughing for long, since the person in question was soon discovered to be a cam girl named Lucy Fox that Boogie met on a Sugar Daddy website. On the said site, he described himself as a people pleaser who liked to be pleased. As you might expect, having Sugar Daddy website discovered was the last thing you wanted to happen when you have a reputation like Boogie, but somehow it got worse. Him and Lucy would break up eventually, which led Lucy to post a video on Reddit exposing him as being a liar and manipulator during their time of the relationship. So I dated a YouTuber and for his sake, I'm just gonna call him asshole. Okay, so asshole. <laughs> I met Asshole, and um, he was on a website, 
I'm not going to say what kind of website, but you can probably figure it out. And I, you know, thought, oh, this must be a joke. Like, asshole was nice at first, <laughs> as most assholes are. And I thought, well, you know, let's see how it goes. You know, he seems like a nice guy. He was, you know, if you know what I do for a job, then, you know, I have to be at home <clears throat> in order to be on cam. Well, I couldn't do that because it would turn into an argument every time I tried to leave. Um, why are you trying to leave me? You know I need somebody right now. Blah, 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 blah. You know. He was like, why don't you just stay at home? Well, I'm not making any money at home right now because it's a slow season and I can't go anywhere because every time I try to leave your house, you scream and yell at me. All right. Fair enough. Here's $500 so you can go out to Los Angeles. You aren't, you know, you're just fucking annoying and, and you just don't want to listen to me, blah, 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 blah. All of this raised a serious questions about Boogie's previous marriage, with some people thinking that he was also abusive to his ex-wife, which was backed up by Boogie once mentioning that Des signed an NDA before the divorce, something he later denied. True or not, you can see how people around Boogie started to talk about him in a way they never would before. It is good to keep in mind that, at the beginning, all of these controversial events were mostly unknown to the majority of his fan base. but after so many incidents, there was so much dirt on Boogie that it was just a matter of time before someone would blow a whistle, exposing the truth to everyone in a very public manner. The explosion would in fact come, and it was caused by a curious YouTuber named Christopher Tom with his video The Fall of Boogie 2988, why he's losing subscribers. To say that this video would cause shockwaves would be putting it lightly. By far, it is still the most popular video on Tom's channel, sitting at almost 4 million views today. In this video, Tom exposed all of the dirty laundry of Boogie 298 with no filter. It included everything I said earlier and much, much more. Things like Boogie laughing at his friend that died of cancer. So you had to go through that, bro. Yeah, that's okay. All right. I mean, I didn't go through it. I'm still alive. She's dead. Damn. Oh. Yeah. That's brutal. Yeah. I'm serious. You know, she like, what do I? What, why do I get to complain? She's the one who has to be dead. You know, fuck. Him buying a Tesla. Many more examples of him cheating on his diet. A toxic attitude towards his fans and overall horrible behavior on camera. Needless to say, everyone that watched this video was shocked at the amount of evidence Tom provided, and in the process, questioned their own opinion of who Boogie actually is. The earthquake was so devastating that Boogie had to make a response video and things definitely didn't go so well. Hey guys, um, this is a video I've been told not to make by almost every person in the YouTube community. Every creator I know, all of my fans and everyone else. But I'm at a point now where I feel like I have to address this stuff. I feel like it has reached critical mass and I'm going to go ahead and talk about it because either it will help the situation and things will get better or it will make the situation so much worse that my career is finally over and I'm kind of okay with either at this point if I'm being honest. No one was buying his explanations and for the first time ever on his channel, Boogie was slowly starting to get more hate than love on YouTube. Something like this was primarily felt when you look at his views, which drastically declined in a span of just a few short months. It seemed that... Unlike before, this drama had an actual effect on Boogie's career, a fact he also had a hard time accepting. However, the biggest detractor group that caused Boogie sleepless nights was on Reddit, where a mega thread about him was made called The Hidden Truth That Boogie Doesn't Want You To Know, documenting all of the mistakes Boogie has made while on YouTube. The mega thread was even mentioned in Tom's video and it was only getting bigger by the day. The Boogie was basically at war with that mega thread from the moment that post gained attraction. Did I see Reddit today? Oh, I seen Reddit today. Ooh, ooh, we don't like Boogie anymore. Good, I don't fucking like you. I don't fucking like you, Reddit. Okay, I don't care. I never cared. Here's how. All right, all right. Hey, let, me, let, me fucking, let me fucking show you something real quick. Hold on, let me show you something. Okay. Here, here is, here is right here. Hold on, this is a magic card. This is not what I was gonna show you. You guys want to fucking see this? Oh, you guys want to fucking see this? You ready for this? You see what this is? This is the world's tiniest violin, okay? 
play in the tiny little fur fucking dirge for how little of a shit I give about what fucking Reddit thinks about me. Okay? I don't give a fuck. He began to despise his detractors more than ever before because he was afraid of losing his status on YouTube to the point of sheer paranoia. He talked about them more and more on all platforms. It seemed all he was thinking about were his haters while keeping his true feelings about them hidden deep inside. Unfortunately for Boogie, everything he felt would blow up on a particular World of Warcraft stream where one of the viewers asked why Boogie is getting so much hate, prompting Boogie to turn off his reasoning and then proceeded to say this. Boogie, I don't get why you get so much crap. You have a hard on life as it is, but especially when you have done so much good and helped so many people. P.S. I love you, no homo. Um, I think I can answer that question, um, and it's, it's complicated. But I think the most important thing to remind you is that I have made more than my fair share of mistakes. But there's also a group of people out there who f like to hate on what's popular to hate on. Your wings of redemptions, your dark side fills. Um, they just like to hate on what's popular, and recently it's become popular to hate on me. These are the people I despise. If I'm being honest with you, these are the people I dislike. And if I look down on you, and you look down on me, but I look down on you, you must be a real piece of shit if I look down on you. Would you agree, guys? If I look down on you, you must be a real fucking loser. If someone like me or Dark Side Phil or Wings of Redemption looks down on you, you must be one of the worst pieces of shit alive. But I want you to know, I think you are the lowest of the low. I think you are the worst of the worst. I think that there are fucking rapists and Nazis out there who, even though they are rapists and fucking Nazis, they are more redeemable than you because at least they're doing something they fucking believe in. They may be pieces of garbage, they may be pieces of shit, they may harm other people, but at least they believe what they fucking stand for. In what could be considered one of the worst streams Boogie has ever done, he further sunk his career, with one of the most memorable lines from that stream being that internet trolls are worse than Nazis or rapists. While most of the people laughed at Boogie for his absurd logic, it showed just how much the negative reputation was having an impact on him, to the point where he would say such an absurd thing without thinking. But the lunacy doesn't stop here. Frustrated at a new fanbase that was gathering around his mistakes, Boogie decided to strike back at his detractors. He started to throw around accusations, one of the most notable ones being that he accused people on that subreddit of swatting him, a very serious claim that could put people responsible for such an act behind bars for a very long time. The owner of the subreddit, Haberdasher A, denied these claims to the fullest extent. To prove his point, the moderator displayed Fayetteville police logs from around the time Boogie claimed he was swatted and there was no record of any police officers being dispatched to Boogie's residence, to which Boogie responded that the police indeed area simply don't record the visits to his house because of the sheer number of swattings he had in the past. Naturally, this claim was insane, and it started to seem like Boogie was lying about this very serious topic. When he realized he backed himself into a corner, Boogie released a series of tweets in which he explained his master plan. How he purposely lied about swattings, hoping that his subreddit detractors would look into his personal information and then the police records, which would prove how obsessive they are about him to dig that deep into his claims, and and in turn prove how insane that subreddit is and how he was just a victim of unhinged maniacs. If Boogie honestly thought something like this was a good idea, then I suggest that he visits the nearest hospital to check if he has any brain damage, because he just admitted to a federal crime in the hopes of settling internet beef. Amazingly enough, he doubled down on this so much that Boogie even got into the DMs of one of the subreddit members where he said even more deranged things like that he wouldn't mind going to jail if it meant that he would take that subreddit down with him. Boogie also made over 300 tweets in one day, meaning he had a meltdown of apocalyptic proportions. If the hole that Boogie was digging wasn't deep enough, he followed his statements with a now deleted video where he went on yet another rant about how he finally got the upper hand on his detractors. I have a friend who works for the FBI and I asked him how to deal with the online harassment that I get from a certain subreddit, from Kiwi Farms, from places like that. And he told me the only way to fight that stuff back is to expose those people for what they really are. 
So that's what this video is. I, I'm going to show you some receipts that I think you should see. And after talking to my friend at the FBI, after talking to a friend in PR, they made a suggestion and that was to bait them and see what would happen. So I did. I had a private conversation with somebody I knew who posted on that message board and I filled it full of tons of misinformation to see what they would grab a hold of. I told them all kinds of outlandish stuff. I told them that I was writing a book, which is not an entire lie, but I told them that I uh, was swatted twice in December. I told them that my uh, that I dated a girl that was 43 years old for the last couple of years because I wanted to see what they would do with this information and I just wanted to keep them busy. What they latched onto though, I, I was totally surprised with what they latched on because they incriminated themselves so beautifully that I can't, if you have respect for these people after me showing you this, then I don't want you to have respect for me because I no longer respect you. Right here in one of the most upvoted posts on this entire subreddit, they show where they both doxed me, where they searched police records involving my address and my home information, and they have literally gone completely batshit insane. It's almost unbelievable how Boogie handled this situation, almost as if he was purposely sabotaging himself. With deranged outbursts like these, he became even more unpopular, which meant he was again losing his already dwindling fanbase, something that could be noticed by again taking a look at views on his channel. However, there were a few successful videos here and there, like when Boogie got dental implants to replace his rotten teeth, which was similar to the success he had with his gastric bypass videos, but there is only so much body modification a person can do to stay relevant on YouTube. On top of his newfound infamy, other members of the community began to despise him, and Boogie was soon cut off from his old friends. You know, it's one person that ruins it for everyone, I can it's, understand. It's been great for me, yeah. every YouTuber I've met, I've liked, every fan I I've hate Boogie2988. Oh, leave him alone, have man, have met that. Him. Every fan subscriber I've met, perfectly nice. Boogie2988 once was a very respectable member of the YouTube community, right? I mean, no, his most popular video was Fat Man Falls Into a Fucking Pool. I don't oh my think God, he was that me. respectable. <laughs> Amazingly enough, all of this pales in comparison to yet another incident that will befell Boogie. Boogie would soon clash with another YouTuber called Frank Hustle, a shady character on the platform who gained fame by harassing people in public. Frank was a notorious figure, and Boogie definitely didn't need to fight this battle, but he did. As a result, Frank and him started arguing and then everything escalated into a public brawl. But don't think this was just an indecisive battle, because Frank played Boogie like a fiddle in every encounter they had, saying pretty much anything to get him upset, which resulted in Boogie having multiple meltdowns. They pretend I am, and I can't fucking believe what it looks like. You are like. fat and annoying. Yeah, I am, I'm comfortable with that. I made over a million dollars being that, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And where are you now? Fat, old, lonely. Dude, you were messaging me yesterday telling me that you trust me and that you think I'm a good guy. And <laughs> yeah, I was, I was hoping, man. I was hoping, man. I it's met you okay. two days ago and you're like, bro, I trust you. Do whatever, bro. I trust you. It's fine. Yeah. Still you know, get your testosterone actually... levels checked, bro. Oh, I take testosterone once every two weeks. I have really low testosterone, so I have to inject myself. No, I wait. can fucking tell. I can fucking tell. That was Man, I'm warning you and like, I get that that guy earlier doesn't believe it. But like, people get in the middle of fights here. Like, if you fucking reach out and touch me, or like, we start arguing, like, somebody's gonna end up hurting you, man. I don't want Shut that. the fuck up, bro. I don't care. Shut up. You're well, like I fucking do, man. warning I me. I, I don't give a fuck. I genuinely, what is, I genuinely don't. You wanna hear, uh, you wanna hear a story from therapy? It's super mute. Not really, no. I don't. Oh, okay. Right, cool. The biggest thing that agitated Boogie was when Frank said that he would come to Arkansas to harass him in person. Boogie responded with a plethora of threats, one of which was that he would shoot Frank on sight if he ever dared to show his face anywhere near his house. His heated reaction to that subject matter only motivated Frank to actually fulfill his promise. On September 27, 2020, Frank posted a picture of him in Fayetteville, a town in which Boogie lived. By the looks of it, it appeared that Frank was serious when he said that he would meet Boogie in person. This tweet it caused such a shit show that Boogie would go on drama alert to have another encounter with Frank, in which he threatened even more to take his life. Do you understand that this is what you do to people? Do you understand that this is what you're doing to me? You pick somebody with post-traumatic stress disorder to, to target with this type of wrestling. What the fuck are you doing in Fayetteville, Arkansas? Why did you travel several states to pull this shit? 
I've told you to fucking leave me alone, and I will fucking end you if you step foot on my fucking property, Frank. Why, Frank? Why? Because what it's the funny. Fu- and the idea it's not you, fucking the funny, idea Frank. You... It's not fucking funny. When you're laying dead on my fucking front lawn, okay. that won't be fucking funny. <laughs> Okay, but Boogie let, let Boogie was still unaware of how this situation worked, as all of his threats only served to encourage Frank to do even more shit to upset him. All of this culminated in Frank actually arriving at Boogie's house a day later, providing us with one of the most memorable interactions ever recorded. Open the door, you fat sack of shit! Come on, you fucking pussy, what's the deal? There were a lot of things Boogie could have done to solve this situation. He could have refused to open the door, a sensible thing since Frank is just a troll looking for attention. Unfortunately, he did open a door on that fateful day of September 28th, and what's more, he was holding a gun in his hand and pointing it at Frank. Pull the trigger. Okay. Is this what I have to do? (laughs) (laughs) You fat fucking (laughs) Oh my god. Is this real? Is this guy gonna kill me? Yes. Unbeknownst to Boogie, by pulling this charade, he has already fulfilled all of Frank's wildest dreams, since he gave him an abnormal amount of undeserved attention, as well as getting agitated to the point where he actually came out of his house with a handgun. Frank realized that, although unarmed, he was in complete control of the situation. Seeing how enraged Boogie was, he decided to push even harder in the hopes of making him do something stupid. Unfortunately, Boogie fell for the obvious bait, and then went on to make one of the worst decisions of his life. I'm asking you to leave. In about 30 seconds, I'm going to fire a warning shot. (laughs) Fire it now. Fire the warning shot now. Boogie shot his handgun in the air as a warning shot to scare Frank enough to leave his property, which he eventually did. Regrettably, the cost of such a stupid act would be paid solely by Boogie, as shooting a gun in an urban area is both dangerous and illegal. This clip of Boogie going out to shoot his gun went viral, and for some time he garnered a large amount of attention, but unfortunately it was again for all the wrong reasons. Everyone commented on the situation and how terribly Boogie reacted to it. Again, even in this unsettling circumstance, Boogie couldn't stop himself from displaying his hatred for anyone talking bad things about him, and because of that hatred, he again made a fool of himself, this time on a live stream called Boulder Talk Radio, hosted by Matt Jarbo. You might wonder who this particular person is, so let me tell you a little bit about him. Mundane Matt, or Matt Jarbo, was a relatively popular YouTuber back in the day, rising to prominence on YouTube during the Gamergate era with his videos that target at SJWs in a form of criticism and or mockery. He would in fact have his own showdown with Anita Sarkeesian, in which he amassed a sizable fanbase. After the Gamergate saga ended, he would make various videos regarding gaming or any other issue he might come across. In other words, he was part of a commentary community. Unfortunately, the true integrity of his character would be revealed to everyone on a stream hosted by Ethan Ralph called The Killstream, where it was discovered that he flagged videos that were criticizing or making fun of of him i had something to say to mundane matt one earlier you asked why would you come on and uh the reason is you've been deflecting and um you know spinning everything so far and two i've been telling the no, truth no, no. the entire time so i don't think it's the truth but the second thing is there is a way you can show your reporting history on youtube i'll link it in the chat so if you didn't do it they should have nothing in it correct it no, got I'm, super I'm, quiet. I'm reading. I'm reading. It's, it's literally like seven sentences, buddy. <laughs> All right, here, here we go. The screen share is live. Let's see it. All right, hold on. My pants are off. Oh Jesus Christ! All right, Matt, fine. what there are you doing? Head. How's it taking? Watch it. Look at all those tabs. I have a lot of tabs open, but. I am Thanks for reporting. Hey, <laughs> 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 but nothing, but nothing on. Now wait a minute. Nothing on that. That's just okay. Hold on. 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 Hold on.
face. He lied straight to our fucking face. For an hour. Yes, you heard that right. A man who was fighting against censorship was censoring people who had something bad to say about him. Keep in mind that he tried to keep all of this a secret until the people on the panel managed to reveal the truth. Naturally, after this scandal, Matt lost all of his viewers, basically turning his channel into a wasteland overnight. It is ironic that a YouTuber who was fighting for integrity and free speech in video games turned out to have as much integrity as a wet napkin. Surprisingly enough, Matt was still making content after that scandal. This is important to us because among that content he also started streaming. Sometime after the Boogie and Frank incident, Matt would fire up a stream that was probably only watched by his mother and one of his alt accounts. Here he would make a wild claim that the Boogie and Frank incident looked staged to him, basically proposing the idea that the both parties fabricated the entire event. Everything in my gut is telling me that it was fake. Everything I know about video production and the internet and everything else is telling me that it is fake. But I don't know. Again, I could be wrong. Naturally, when an intellectual titan like Matt makes such a delusional statement with basically no audience since no one is watching his shitty streams, a normal person would just ignore these kinds of conspiritual ramblings. But as previously demonstrated, Boogie was on a mission to make his life as difficult as possible. So he hopped on Matt's stream to give him a piece of his mind, embarrassing himself live yet again. All right, Boogie, is that you? Yeah. Can you hey, hear what's me? up, man? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I don't know if you're paying attention or not. I'm just. I'm talking. Am, dude, I'm talking I, I through am, this I'm thing. I'm gonna be very short because I've had a very long. Yeah, day. I'm. I'm just. I'm just talking it through, man. I'm just. No, I'm... no, you need to stop propagating that this is fake. Okay. You need to stop considering that idea. There's no. There's a zero percent chance. Zero percent chance that I'm such a worthless piece of shit that I would fake something like this. You invite me to this live stream. I click on the link to listen to it, and I have to listen to you accuse me of being such a low piece of shit I am that you think I would questions. fake something like that. You shouldn't ask questions like this. Hey, do you fuck your own mother? That's a question I could ask. No. Do you molest children, Matt? That's a question I could ask. No. But I would never think so little of you. I'm I would not never thinking think so you little did. of you. So do I'm not asking... think so little of me to think that I would fake something like that. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. That is disgusting. You are disgusting. This time, however, Boogie was not satisfied by just giving another rant on a public platform, so he also decided to go deeper by admitting live on stream that he wanted to kill himself a year ago in the hopes it would stop the harassment on YouTube. Well, here's the reality of what just really happened, okay? You, okay. you there? I'm here. I'm listening. A year ago, I was ready to kill myself to try to change this platform because of this type of harassment that showed up at my front door today. Because Reddit didn't give a fuck. Because Keemstar didn't give a fuck. Because no one gave a fuck about Etika. No, I mean, people talked about it, but nothing changed. YouTube didn't change. Uh, Keemstar didn't change. 4chan didn't change. Reddit didn't change. Nothing changed. Commentary community just ate it up and profited off of Etika's fucking death. And I was ready to fucking go. I was ready to put a bullet in my head. Actually, I was going to take pills. But I was ready to fucking end my life in the hopes that it would make a fucking difference. Because as bad as it was that Attica died, he wasn't as big of a creator. I had more subscribers, I had more views, and I've been on the platform longer. And so I thought I could signal boost Attica. And these are the thoughts I had. And I went to VidCon and I talked to everyone about it everyone that would listen. He was most likely referring to this video called why I almost took my own life in 2019 and why I didn't setting it straight where he talked about his difficulties after divorce and gastric bypass surgery. This disastrous stream had no effect on Matt since his career on YouTube was practically over and later on he also deleted all of his videos except for one called allow me to introduce myself which received mostly negative feedback meaning that his channel was left in the deepest darkest parts of the warp where it fucking belongs. However, Boogie still had some remnants of a following, so he would suffer the brunt of the assault caused by his appearance on that unfortunate stream. His shenanigans with the big iron on his hip would actually land him in a jail for a day, and after a year of legal issues he now also had a felony charge to his name, which means that Boogie was now officially a criminal. You can only imagine how all of this had an effect on his mental state, which was not that great to begin with. With no one to turn to, Boogie started to make more rambling videos, where he talked about how bad he was 
doing, hoping to gain the much needed support from his audience. Unfortunately, such content isn't something people want to watch, because for most of them YouTube is an escape from their own depressing reality, not a place where they can get more of the same. Boogie tried to fix this by showcasing his new attempts at weight loss, but by this point people have become very uninterested in his weight, meaning he still couldn't reclaim some of the past fame. At the start of 2021, Boogie made a very strange video called I'm finally rich, how crypto made me rich. It was something completely out of left field and no one was sure what Boogie was trying to do with this. By the title alone, you could already guess what the video is about. He started by saying that money was no longer a problem for him because he invested all of the money he had into crypto, which quadrupled it. Not about the attention, it's not about the views. And these days it's especially not about the money and let me explain why. You remember back in 2019 when I was completely out of my mind and talking openly on Twitter and elsewhere about just deleting myself at some point? Uh, I did something very stupid that I do not recommend anyone else ever do. But it worked. I basically took every dime I had in liquid funds and invested it in a huge gamble and i did this at the advice of my friend jesse ridgeway mcjuggernuggets who guaranteed that money saying that if the money disappeared he would help take care of me and help me rebuild first off let me say that i'm not a financial advisor i do not recommend that you do what i did it was a very stupid risk stupid risky maneuver but i invested pretty much everything i had into cryptocurrency and i pulled it out a couple of times and i put it back in a couple of times uh, so I probably didn't do as well as I could have, but I invested all the way back here and yeah, that's where we currently are with that market. So to say that I doubled my money is an understatement. In fact, I did more than that. Everyone watching this was puzzled as to what was Boogie trying to say with this, but it is important to keep this video in mind as we will need it later. Around this time, Boogie's channel fell on even harder times, with an average video viewership that could only be described as abysmal. His 4 million subscriber channel had an average of 50,000 views even before the incident with Frank, but like I said before, sometimes he would post a video that would do really well, like the one where he was going with his YouTuber friend McJuggernuggets to his home town showcasing landmarks and talking about his childhood. The premise of this video is very good, with Boogie showing the actual buildings he was referring to in his old videos. Even here, people were doubting his credibility, because in the next video, in which he was exploring his abandoned childhood home, everything seemed fabricated. What I mean by that is the setup for exploring this house was almost too perfect. Because the moment they entered the house, his mother's teaching degree was sitting on the floor for everyone to see. They also found one of his brother's articles, but the most incredible find was a pristine picture of him, his brother and his mother that had been exposed to the elements for decades but was still in perfect condition. He also tried getting views by recreating some of his most famous videos from the past, like Dramatic Fat Guy Splash 2021, but comparing the two videos, it was easy to conclude that he successful was minimal. Whatever the case may be, it was almost unbelievable that Boogie was still making videos despite his low analytics and he still makes them to this very day. The main difference now is that he has lost ties with a number of other YouTubers, including his friend McJuggernuggets and most notably Ethan Klein from H3H3 H3 Podcast over a tweet he sent while Ethan was in the hospital. As we reach the current day, it seems like Boogie's performance on YouTube isn't getting any better. If anything, things have only gotten worse for him when he posted the infamous video called I Need Your Help, which was released on October 5th. The premise is as follows. Boogie admitted that all of his cryptocurrency investments had crashed at some point, meaning he had lost everything. At first it seemed like Boogie was trying to tell his story, but the main purpose of the video was soon revealed when he started to beg his viewers for donations and or t-shirt purchases. Well, this is a video I've dreaded making, but it's time. So I'm asking for your help as we head into the holiday season. And I'm not making any excuses here. You know I spent a tremendous amount of money on dumb, dumb things. But the biggest issue is that I had a nice big nest egg. I took some financial advice from a friend and I'm not pointing fingers necessarily. I took the advice, but I put my money in the crypto market in the wrong section and I pretty much lost most of everything. That sucks, that really sucks. So that's why I'm asking for your help today. And it's as simple as two, two groups of people here I wanna to talk to. The first of which is fans who just like the content. 
If you click on videos you like and you watch them to the end and you drop a like and you leave a comment and you share it with friends and you click the notifications, you do the YouTube stuff, you're doing plenty. If that's all you wanna do, if that's all you can do, I love you to death. You're, you mean everything to me, right? There's a second group of people who might find themselves able to do a little more and if you're one of those people, I'm asking for your help today too. Do you, do you like the t-shirts I have? This one's not in the Merch Lane shop. Yeah, there's several. You guys want and I'm to making new designs all the time. Upload videos to YouTube. And if you like a t-shirt, at this point, since I'm making no I'm money whatsoever profit, on DSP Gaming, and I make there are a lot of words coming through my head while watching this video. Sad, pathetic, shameless. But one word on which we can all agree would be embarrassing. The fact that Boogie actually posted something like this on his channel is unconscionable. The reaction was as you might expect, with Boogie gaining even more negative attention in the form of literally everyone on the internet lashing out on him, especially given that not even a year before he boasted about how crypto made him rich. By making this video, Boogie crossed another milestone on his way to the bottom, since now even e-begging is on the table. The comments on the said video were no better, so I'll just read some of them to show you how awkward this situation was. Here is a man who was awarded for his hunger and work as an entertainer, which raised his financial rank so much that he forgot what a growling stomach sounded like. Now, after years of leisure and complacency, he becomes reacquainted with the growl and turns to those who experience constant growling to help him make it stop. Most people with depression, anxiety and financial issues have to deal with life. It's time you do too, Boogie. That was a really good one. I wake up every morning and thank the universe I'm not Boogie2988. The last one I think hits the nail on the head. I was going to express my disgust with manipulative internet celebrities and their toxic relationships with their fan bases, but I think the comment section already has that covered. Just please, don't donate money to this guy, he'll be fine. If you wish to donate, give that money to an actual charity. There's millions of people in immensely worse positions than Boogie is right now. This is pretty much what his audience thinks of him, and if you want to see how much other members of the YouTube community think of him, all you have to do is watch one of the millions of responses to this video, all of which mock Boogie to oblivion for his absurd life choices and flawed reasoning. Boogie did, in fact, make a follow-up video to this one, in which he expressed his gratitude to his audience for their overwhelming support during his time of need. Ironically, this video was recorded in his room, and for a man with a horrible financial situation, he sure as shit has a lot of collectibles and other equipment in his background. This picture is a perfect summary of where Boogie's priorities really are. I want to say that I am utterly and completely humbled by this because when I uploaded that video, I expected nothing but negativity, specifically because I left out a lot of reasons that I was having money problems. I left out the fact that I spent $27,000 in legal fees. I left out the fact that it's hard for me to keep a sponsor because there's people who hate me and write my sponsors until they drop me. Boogie did earn more than a thousand dollars on his e-begging video, but at the price of his already diminishing reputation. He also addressed some of the comments that were left for him. Now this commenter left a comment that the majority of people left, which basically boils down to, I have no sympathy for you, you need to get out there and work just the way that I am. And I got a lot to say about that. First off, he's not wrong, the majority of people need to work for a living at a 9 to 5 job. And I might very well be one of those people, and I've started looking. This deck is stacked against me a little bit though, because keep in mind I've been disabled since 2008. I don't have a working back, I can barely stand up, I can barely move. That's why I have to be in the pool for exercise. That's why boxing was probably only a pipe dream, but it's something I work towards anyway and will continue to work towards. On top of that, I'm mentally ill. <laughs> I also have no work history. Pretty much ever the last job I actually had was back in 2007 and the woman who hired me for a small business has been dead since 2008. Uh, on top of that, I'm also a felon. So I need to find somebody who hire a mentally ill disabled felon with no work history and no degree. 
I'm sure that job's out there. Let me translate what Boogie just said. Hey guys, in the decades since I started YouTube, I have made no real effort to better myself. If anything, my bad habits have gotten the worst out of me and in the end I am in an even worse position than before. So why are you stupid fucks recommending I get a real job when clearly I have made myself unemployable? He also tried to explain his side of the story and make excuses for his shameless e-begging video, citing that many other creators ask for support and it is never a problem when they do it. First, let me say that every YouTuber I watch has channel memberships turned on or Patreon and they remind you occasionally to go check them out, right? Uh, every live streamer I watch allows people to donate directly to them, right? Uh, every content creator I watch reminds you to drop a like on the video or the live stream, to hit follow, to hit subscribe, to share it with people you love. So what is it that I did differently that makes people angrier or more critical. Well, Boogie, I will tell you exactly what you did differently. There is a significant difference between a YouTuber who reminds his audience about his Patreon or membership in a video that has actual content in it and a YouTuber who creates a video solely to emotionally manipulate their audience into financially supporting their own poor financial decisions. Let's make a real life example. If a person you knew went to a casino and lost his entire wage in one afternoon, would it be reasonable for him to go out and ask for money from strangers? But it doesn't stop here. Boogie's hatred for other creators who reacted to his video was hard to hide, whether it be on Twitter or on his YouTube channel. On one particular video called How YouTube Promotes Abuse, he gave yet another rant on how he was dissatisfied with this platform and how people on it were treating him. YouTube profits when I dare speak out against it, and YouTube profits when a large creator dunks on me for talking about it. They make millions. If you know me as a creator, as a friend, as a fan, you'll know it's so beyond reality, it's laughable. Boogie's never actually been mentally ill. Boogie could lose the weight if he wants to. Boogie is abusive to women. Boogie posted TikTok to fuck children. You've heard this shit. Content creators have posted this shit over and over again on this platform. YouTube has profited from it, and when I speak out against it, large creators punch down to make fun of me for taking the fucking bait. This video also contains the absolutely astonishing claim that the reason why people hate DSP, Wings of Redemption, and him is primarily because they are fat and autistic. And there's a whole group of people they call lol cows that YouTube makes money off of their harassment of, right? Wings of Redemption, Dark Side Phil, me. You know who I'm talking about. It's funny what those guys have in common, huh? Fat and autistic? The internet didn't change that much. He again showed that he still gave criticism more attention that was necessary and in the process did not acknowledge his own shortcomings. By this point in time, Shame was long gone from Boogie to United States channel, so he figured he might as well announce the creation of his OnlyFans account. Meaning, Boogie doesn't care what he brings to this godforsaken land as long as he can make a quick buck. <sighs> okay, so if you're a super fan, you made it this far in the video, I'm gonna pitch an idea for you, okay? I don't know what you're gonna think, and your opinion probably won't change my plan to do this, but I do want to hear your opinion, okay? So I've applied to get an OnlyFans account, and people think I'm going to post, like, pictures of my butthole and that kind of thing. And, and look, I'm not above doing that. If it was going to make me a tremendous amount of money, I would gladly do that. But what I do want to do on there is upload just daily shots of what I'm doing, pictures of the dog. Yeah, I'll probably upload shirtless TikToks and, and shirtless boudoir photos if that's entertaining to people. As it is right now, all I want to do is goofy, shirtless nonsense. But if the money was there, if the money was there, never say never. It looks like Boogie's delusional state made him believe that he might succeed in the sex industry, while in reality he soon won't be working in any industry with the way he has conducted himself, something that could be easily concluded when you take a quick glance at the current state of his YouTube channel, showing just how much of a void it has become. Because his average viewership dropped from 50,000 to 30,000, which is a very depressing fact when you consider his 4 million subscriber channel.
but even that 4 million will eventually drop to 3 because Boogie has been losing subscribers since 2019 when he had 4.6 million. The flesh of a rotting carcass that is his channel now only serves to feed many detractor channels, some of which quickly gained a sizable following by simply reacting to and mocking Boogie's content. To show you just how much he is disliked on this platform now, on November 16th Boogie made a video where he revealed that he has a rare form of blood cancer which could potentially kill him in 20 years from now. Turns out I got a rare blood cancer called polycythemia vera, which basically makes your body produce too many red blood cells. And when I started taking that testosterone supplement seven or eight years ago, however long it's been, um, we knew that this was a possibility. You never think you're going to be the guy who gets that side effect though, right? Even such tragic news did not deter his detractors, the majority of whom believe Boogie is lying about his diagnosis in order to gain attention and views. Boogie again responded to these accusations on Twitter, this time claiming that he will flag creators who talk about that slander and even potentially sue them. It seems like Boogie lost all of the influence he had before, since now he is ridiculed for anything he does on this platform, while in the meantime his channel is dying from the death of a thousand cuts. It is regretful that this trend shows no signs of stopping, which which leaves Boogie in a very uncomfortable position. Making a video like this wasn't easy. Boogie was a big part of my life in the past and many of his old videos still hold a great value to me. However, pretending that nothing is wrong would be denying reality, something which Boogie appears to do all the time these days. His reputation has drastically shifted from that of Mr. Rogers of YouTube to that of a DSP clone in recent years. But everyone who makes that comparison forgets the main difference between these two creators. The biggest tragedy of DSP is what he could have been, while the tragedy of Boogie is what he was, a gentle giant who shared stories about his traumatic past while trying to give his audience advice on how to improve their own lives. That old Boogie eventually turned into a man-child, who then lost his fans by converting his channel into a therapy session, having awful reactions to criticism and scolding people for failing to live up to standards that he himself could not meet. Unfortunately for him, the good days are gone and there is no going back. From our point of view, it seems like the only way Boogie could truly be happy is if he left the internet for good. But the problem with that is, if he ever does that, there will be nothing left. Boogie has become its prisoner, his channel is the main source of both his happiness and his sorrow. He knows that without YouTube he has nothing, and that is truly depressing to say. The future is grim, and it is regrettable that Boogie must face it alone. Time can only tell if he will find the peace he so desperately craves.